I know that we all agree here that open open access to ideas, both externally, as you just mentioned, of course, but also internally mm. is a very important virtue for a free and open and flourishing society. Uh, it doesn't seem though that the left wants to have open free thought. Uh, it seems that re-education camps are in order. I, I don't know, <laughs> like I read the headline, I'm like, wait, what? Like, is that just, you know, provocative headline? Norm, you're a little bit more aware of what's going on there. So I'll, I'll let you uh, educate us. And well, how cheerfully can you say off to the gulag? <laughs> <laughs> Something to that effect. No, I. So I, I came across a number of things over the last week that I thought were kind of interesting in this regard. And if we are to, you know, believe that free thought and free speech are important, uh, at both as a, you know, as, as a intellectual virtue and as a civic virtue uh, for the form, former and the latter, respectively, uh, these, these sorts of things were kind of significant to me. So I'm going to share my screen real quick and let's see what I get here. So this is the first thing I came, I came up with, uh, you know, from, from, uh, uh, from reason, I got a this uh, this headline here is this kind of provocative that the ju these journalism professors demand Iowa State University disband the college Republicans over an offensive tweet. Now this is an interesting situation because the the tweet in question was that after the the uh, the the election was over, the college Republicans said this: "Everyone, you must arm up. Expect these people to try to destroy your life. The elites want revenge on us." Okay, now let's think about that for a second. At worst, this is probably just a hyperbolic statement with the kind of a call that maybe you want to own a gun. Mm -hmm. This is not a call to be violent. This is just one sentence. It's not a big deal, right? And yet this provoked, if you read through the article, a, a, a petition that involved, I believe, over 700 people. Uh, that were asking for the college Republicans to get disbanded. Now, to Iowa State's credit, the administration said, we're not going to do anything. They backed off because they said that, hey, this is not like free speech matters. We're not going to do this. Now, that's a positive. That's a positive note. Now, who knows what kind of backlash that, that they maybe got behind the scenes, you know, maybe fire got involved. I don't know. But at least they did the right thing in the end. Now, it's just kind of funny, though, to think about it, especially when you consider that these are just students. It's not like these people have any power. It's not like their influence is large. It's not like Iowa State University is some, you know, massive institution with 80 kajillion students. I mean, <laughs> heck, even, even the college Republicans at the University of Texas at Austin didn't, like, net more than, a, a, you know, 50 or 60 students on any given meeting, as far as I'm aware, back in the day. Uh, of course, that was 10 years ago. You know, and the only reason I even interacted with them is that we had, well, the Libertarian Longhorns, we were, we were the happening group. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that was, that was a whole nother story. That's what you thought at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, but like, again, the point is like, these aren't, these aren't people with influence. This is yeah. like saying, you know, like is, is the, is the, uh, are the, are the Nazis like really at the doorstep here or something? I mean, come on. These are not people with influence. These are not people with power. These are students who probably who don't have jobs, don't have don't have influence. They've got nothing. Right. Yeah. I mean, the then, delicious. They're irony like the there. doorstep to their mother's cellar. Yeah, that, that's that's <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the, it. The delicious even, irony is these people are going to try and destroy us, and then that's exactly what they try and go and do. Well, mm. that's and so the irony here is that in now com compare and contrast this to the response to say the next part, which is that there were. A series of tweets from a, dis a discussion on Twitter uh, regard that basically asked the question: How do you deprogram? Whoa! How do you deprogram seventy-five million people? Where do you start? And this goes on and on, uh -huh. wow. and including things like: Wow, maybe we should go to re-education camps. Maybe we should. Uh, maybe we should take an example from the Nuremberg trials. Oops. Oh my word! Again. And and there was even one person who even suggested for the irredeemable malcontents, maybe firing squads. Now, here's the funny Jeez. thing. These Sign are people. David Atkins here is a journalist. Wow. These people wow. are actually people with influence and voices and, and, and platforms. Wow. And what did they get from this? Well, okay. Admittedly, the firing squad thing, that got taken down by Twitter. 
because that was kind of you know for because and, and the, right if you because click here, so there is a line okay so apparently there is that line but re-education camps like <laughs> so okay <there's> line. <laughs> re-education camps a firing line <laughs> yeah yeah that's, that's the line we're talking about <laughs> nice. here re-education camps though like that's that's permissible talk apparently and and that's what's ironic about this to me is that on the one hand we have a bunch of lefties who are totally fine with uh, with trying to to stamp down on one tweet from a totally powerless group of just random people with a with with very little power. It doesn't ma- they don't matter. And then you have people who actually have platforms talk about well maybe we should send Trumpers to something on the court and so at the Nuremberg trial. And what is this met with? Nothing. There's no. not going to be a, a, mm. anything. Now, I, I say that. Now, maybe maybe there's going to be a slap on the wrist. I, I can't know for certain. But well, I think that just the consideration the of the reaction is where we, where we should be concerned. It is absolutely certain they should be able to say all of this stuff. Right. I mean, fine. They'll let them do so. That's not the concern here. But I'm I'm very I'm very concerned in the long term with the the types of responses that end up getting elicited from these sorts of yep. things. Yep. Well, and you also have AOC, who a couple of weeks ago yeah. was was like, "Hey, we should we should register all of the all of the people who supported Trump, all of his yeah. cabinet members, and all of that. Like, we need to we need to document them so that we can, you know, whatever." Do these people, do these people even we, we, understand? We went to Stalinism real quick. Yeah, <laughs> like like. I don't even understand why that's like, I can understand uh, her saying that on like a a hot mic that she didn't know was turned on and like suggesting it to her colleagues, but like (laughs) knowingly saying such things. Yeah. She broadcast it on Twitter. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Like, hello. Um, Well, and it was weird. I mean, she not only broadcast that on Twitter, but somebody immediately responded with a link saying, yeah, here it is. This is what we're doing. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. The irony of it is, is, you know, of course, we we would say that, I mean, even on the basis of the law, she's much more responsible for such things being said than uh, than than say random student in Iowa State University, exactly, right. or uh, even random yeah. journalist for yeah. whatever yep. Washington yep. Yep. monthly that that's, that that guy works for or something. It's like, it, if I can make a suggestion though, if anybody's looking at how to deal with these kinds of things, I would say that he's not necessarily libertarian, but I would say he leans that way. Uh, Douglas Murray's The Madness of Crowds yeah. is a mm-hmm. wonderful resource to at least start understanding uh, where this uh, kind of comes from. It's uh, interesting, a bit crazy. Yeah. So I, I think it's, it, it's worthy to kind of wrap that up with guys we have to be we have to be on our vigilance with regards to free thought and free speech yeah even with it when it's to for our opponents mm-hmm. like that that has to be that has to be part of the conversation because otherwise yeah. what are we doing yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. come on yeah you know it's interesting you know who taught me that principle believe it or not education camps or anything like that everybody's good with that oh or- i've already got my camp picked out <laughs> okay gotcha yeah. Got your sleeping bag ready? Yeah, I'm right. packed up over on the left. Okay. If it's not like Hunger Games, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Yeah. Ah, uh, why? Well, I'll be the first round to die. <laughs> I'm gone. I'm banking on being Katniss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what's ironic? Like 15-ish years ago, when I was listening to conservative talk radio, the idea that free speech matters no matter what side you're on and that you could def- should be able to defend it in all different directions um uh or the the fact that it's allowed to be said not defend what's mm-hmm. being said uh was sean hannity uh i was huh. a young conservative at the time listening to sean hannity for yeah, about six to eight months or so and i remember being strongly convinced uh he was on a little diatribe on his show and he was kind of like look free speech matters in every direction you can't just be it for it when a conservative is talking and you know anyway so even it, conservatives know that this is true uh the left apparently does not because well, you know speech is violence well, everything we're time, saying right now is violence because we're all white. silence and violence everything is be, violence but let's be honest so it's not as if the right is completely sinless in this regard either and to, absolutely without getting into the details i highly recommend this article on just google search will to power conservatism by Stephanie Slade at Reason. This was in the October issue 
of this year and this is a truly great article and you know props we'll, put a, to Stephanie, we'll put a link in the friend. in the description too it's so good yeah all right That's so all the solution the solution to all of this is something we're going to talk about in our next episode uh where matthew is going to give us the rundown on a uh, libertarian city that <laughs> well we'll let you know next time i'll just say there are bears involved there are bears <laughs> there are bears bears and libertarians involved it's gonna be awesome like bear arms or like we do have the like right or the Russian actual hairy resist bear the bear arms joke like yeah. russian bears yeah well kind all of. right like russian bears It'll be so a get going. Situation we'll just Russia. do a slow fade as we make more puns leading out to Balls and bears. <laughs> right. Thank you everybody for joining us. We will uh we, we can barely stand waiting till next time. <laughs>